Thank you guys. It's, you know, all pet politics are local. We'll figure this out at some point when you do. You'll uh, you'll show it. So one of the things I've been working on, I'm just getting the timer going here, for many years is uh, because of uh, living in Central Ohio. In uh, 2004, uh, they stole the presidential election. You know, John Kerry was the rightful winner in 2004. The one good thing we can say about George W. Bush is that he was never elected president of the United States by <laughs> the American people. And uh, since then, things have actually gotten worse. And uh, people get depressed when, I, when we talk about this, but this is something we have to break through. So we're looking at a presidential election this year. I will guarantee you in a fair vote count in this country, if there was an actual fair vote count, Bernie Sanders would be elected president. I know that, um, that's counterintuitive, but if you look at what the polls are saying, he is actually beating Donald Trump by way more than Hillary Clinton does. And, and so what we, what we see now, and it's not the same here in Berkeley as, as it is in the rest of the country, but we do have to, have to look at this issue, is that 80% of, of the vote in the United States will be cast on electronic voting machines. And, the, and most of the people will be registered officially on electronic poll books. And so the strategy, and I have a piece about this, up to, uh, it's, it's up right now at um, uh, Reader Supported News. And if you go to Reader Supported News online, you can read this piece with me, Mimi Kennedy, about Fatrakis and me. And basically the, the, the GOP strategy is to strip and flip Strip the voter rolls of people who are suspected Democrats, mostly black people and Hispanics, and also young people, especially college students and the elders who are on Social Security. Strip them from the voter rolls, and Greg Powers has done the great reporting on this. Um, he's a great investigative reporter. He was the one who first told the story about Florida 2000, and he continues to do so. And we are seeing millions of people stripped from the voter rolls right now by the Republicans to make sure that they don't vote in this coming election. Now, if that's not sufficient, and it probably even that won't be, you have to remember Obama literally won the, that's right, uh, the uh, 2008 and 12 elections by more than 10 million votes. Now, they lowered his vote count, but these were huge landslides that Obama won by, and we, you know, there's no more Republican Party. The Republican Party is all smoke and mirrors now. It's basically a few corporations, and Phoebe is going to talk about that in a minute, uh, with control of the media and a bunch of rich white guys. For the rest of the country, the demographic has moved totally away from the Republican Party. And so all they can do now is strip the voter rolls and flip the election. And we're looking specifically at six swing states, Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, Michigan, Iowa, and Arizona. These six states have Republican governors and Republican secretaries of state. And so at midnight on election night, when they realize how badly they've lost, they will call in their IT person, and then they will ask the IT person how long it will take to flip the vote count, and then she'll say about 60 seconds. And they'll say, wherever they're caught, and she'll say no. So between now and, the, and election day, we have to do this. People tend to get depressed. We have to go to the court. We have to figure out exactly how to beat this system of election theft. Because we know that we have made enormous strides in popular, in public opinion. The American people don't want war. They're not particularly racist, really, when you get right down to it. And aside from the fact we're not even a majority white country anymore, certainly not California, there are all the demographics and all the issues have moved our direction. The biggest barrier we have to really moving power in this country is the electronic system of stripping and flipping voting. So it sounds very depressing, but it's something, look, we've got to deal with it. It's just the way it is. Now, John Simon was here. John is here, can I have this? Uh, in, a, in a night uh, that proudly features Code Pink, he has done Code Red, which is a, a really one of the best, I believe I've read them all, one of the very best books on election theft. And I've asked John to tell us, uh, John has moved from Cal to California from in the, process. in the process, like me, from he's from coming from Boston. Um, uh, 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 this book features one amazing section, which is the big mystery to all of us. Why did the Democrats put up with election theft? Why did John Kerry walk away from the 2004 election when we were telling him he had won, if he had, he had seven million dollars in, in, in a fund to deal with fraudulent elections, he, and, and we told his people 250,000 votes were as yet uncounted, and at one o'clock the day after the election, when it was still very much in play, he conceded 
and went windsurfing. And you know, in 2000, <laughs> in 2000, Al Gore won, and he went to the Supreme Court, and then said nothing. And none of these guys have said anything about it. So I've asked John to, to give us a psychoanalysis of the Democrats <laughs> and why they have. Right, can you do that for us? Please. Hi, I, I, I probably can't do that. But, you know, the truth is, we don't know. We're not inside the heads of John Kerry or Al Gore or Bernie Sanders. I'll tell you this. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give you hope since we're, 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 we're focused on hope. And I think, I think Carvey has alluded to it. The real hope here is that the country that we think and all your colleagues and friends and serious people who care about people and plants and animals and the fate of the earth, all of the America that they think they're seeing and taking pretty much at face value is bullshit. It is a fraud of the electoral system. So that's where the hope lies, because this is a pretty simple thing, counting votes. I mean, in a democracy, one of the responsibilities of the, of the people who vote should be to participate in the counting of the vote. So it should be something we can fix, right? And there's still plenty wrong. There's the media, there's the money, there's the gerrymandering, there are all those things. But unless you're contemplating revolution, and I don't see anybody here with a Che fire shirt on or any sort of, you know, heavy firearms or even, you know, smoke bombs. I mean, unless we're talking about revolution, it's the electoral system. That's what we have. That's what a democracy has. And right now, it has been subverted and corrupted systematically. I've been at this for 14 years, as has Harvey. And I can tell you, I do forensics. We collect evidence, we look at patterns, we keep seeing things hit us in the face where we say that is just not freaking possible over and over and over and over and over and over again. And we can't get traction with the Democratic Party. But let me go further, because we can't get traction with Bernie Sanders. Let me go further. We couldn't get traction with Lawrence Lessig. Does everybody know who Larry Lessig was? Yeah. He ran a campaign. I mean, he's from my hometown, came my, my adopted hometown, my work town, Cambridge, Massachusetts. He teaches down there at Harvard Law School. I've gone by his office. I've dropped off my book. I've written him letters. He ran a campaign based on what? Electoral integrity, cleaning up the electoral system, gerrymandering, right? Gerrymandering is a big thing, big money, right? He was going to fix that. Voter ID issues, vote suppression, all of those things. This was his single issue campaign that he collected a million dollars or so to go out and change the electoral system. Conspicuously missing was the actual count of the votes. The man wouldn't touch it. I addressed him in public. I said, why the hell won't you touch this? Blah, 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 blah. Nothing that makes any sense. So if you can't get Larry Lessig, it's going to be a hard swing to get Bernie Sanders, and it sure is going to be a hard swing to get the Democratic Party. They don't want to be marginalized. They don't want to give up the power of the duopoly, which is doing very well, thank you, for both Democrats and Republicans. Right? There are many reasons. In the book, I actually cite five, and that's just scratching the surface, of reasons why the Democrats won't actually pay attention to the fact that election after election is being robbed. And by the way, Harvey referred, this is a presidential election year, so people actually get focused. And then the other three years, they just sort of say, ah, whatever. That ah, whatever is fatal. Because Karl Rove is always focused. If you give credit of, of any sort to the man, it is that he is focused. He cares. Why? I don't know. Maybe he just likes to win. I don't think he even has any political conviction, but boy, is he focused. And what did they focus on? They focused on the elections that you can steal without leaving any sort of trace. State legislative elections, U.S. House elections, no exit polls, no nothing, no baseline for forensics. Nothing. 
And there are thousands of those elections. And if you look around at this country right now, I mean, we may get a Democratic president in there, so what? Exactly. You got gridlock. And then eventually, we're going to elect a president who can work with Congress. Somebody like Marco Rubio, let's say, who can work with Congress. Because they've taken over the entire political infrastructure of this country. They own the state houses. They own the judicial systems in most of the states. They own the governorships. They own the attorney generals, the people you have to go to. I mean, California is an island, let's face it. So is Massachusetts in a way, right? Not everything's perfect here, but they don't care about Massachusetts. They don't care about California. They don't need that to stop the Supreme Court. They don't need that to block every progressive initiative. They don't need that to eventually institute Sharia law or whatever the hell they have on their minds. They don't need that because they're going to have the House, and for other reasons, they're going to have the Senate. And not to say that it's hopeless, because this is all a mirage. The counting process has been subverted. It's that easy. And I could, you know, if we had more time, I could go into why it's so easy and exactly how you do it and what the evidence is, you know, and what evidence we've collected to show that it's being done. That these machines are not just vulnerable, but they're actually being exploited. I mean, again, the highest stakes game you can imagine. This country was obsessed for eight months about the air pressure in footballs. You know, they actually opened up a, a machine and looked at a memory card, the way they impounded the footballs and started testing their pressure. No, because football matters. But who governs this country and what this country does to the world apparently doesn't. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to say, you know, there's a very strong psychological resistance to finding out that you've been duped. As a matter of fact, the research they've done shows that people would rather continue being duped than find out that they have been duped. And that's really at play here at many, many levels. What we need is we need to spread consciousness, spread awareness that we're better than this, that we can count our own votes, that we can have a democracy, that we can have an electoral system that is not handed over lock, stock, and barrel and outsourced to Karl Rove and Dominion and ES and S and all these rather shady far right companies that are actually counting the votes. So, uh, you know, where, where I leave this is I have written a book about this. It's comprehensive, it's rather readable. Um, that was a big, big point of emphasis with me is not to make it technical so the eyes don't glaze over. It's the kind of thing that if it actually got read, if it got on Oprah or, you know, Terry Gross even or Charlie Rose, or all things considered, and got it right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, then, you know, and it spread and it started to sort of go viral the way things do in the information age. There would be a big step in the increase of consciousness and awareness, and that is really what we need because the Democrats aren't going to do it. We saw Bernie Sanders is not likely to do it, Florence Lessig wasn't going to do it, it's got to be the people who do it. So I'm going to bring in some books, I'm going to have them for sale. There's a website, it's code red 2014com um, and, you know, I, I, in a way, I mean, of course I want you to read it. I don't want you just to read it. And this is not, you know, financial interest here. This is just interest in the fate of the world, you know. That this is really, really important that we get this moving. It's already pretty much, if I, you know, whisper it, all pretty much too late. But if we're going to have any chance, we better act, and it better spread, and it better spread fast, so that we start counting the votes by humans, and we have a verified system of vote counting, so they can't just rig up, as Harvey says, whatever numbers they need at midnight on election night, whatever year it is, presidential or otherwise. So I'm going to bring in some of the books, and I, I hope you take a look. Okay, thanks very much. <laughs> Yes. Very good. So we do have a program, and I, I want to make sure it's, it's clear. Uh, the program is 100% hand counted paper ballots yeah. in all of the United States. Okay. Germany, uh, uh, Ireland just got rid of their election machine, electronic voting machines. Germany, Ireland, um, uh, Japan, 
Canada, they all have hand counted paper ballots. We want automatic voter registration. Every, time, every human being, every citizen in this country who turns 18 is automatically registered to vote. These voter registration drives are silly. We have a four-day weekend to vote. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It says in the Constitution we have to vote on Tuesday, but we, so we don't have to change the Constitution to do this. You know, states have a lot of leeway in, in, in how elections are, kind of, are done. So those four days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, so the people, you know, don't have to take off work to vote. And then finally, a national holiday to count the votes uh, on that Tuesday, or we can do it on the Wednesday. All, this high, all the high school and college students in the country get the day off, they run the polls, and they count the ballots. It's very simple to do that. That is our goal. And you have to remember, you know, this is, this is not a small issue. This is the biggest issue. Someone once said if, if elections could change anything, they'd be illegal. Well, actually, elections are illegal because they're stolen from us now. If we ever get this system rationalized, if we solve this issue, we could have a revolution in this country by nonviolent means. It has happened elsewhere in, in the world. Okay? Thank you very much, John. John is going to be here for a while. We'll have his website. Next time, presentation. So, uh, and thank you uh, for your comment in the back there. Much appreciated. We're going to move on now because someone said, who is they? So they is the corporation. They is a cancerous tumor that has grown in, the, in this world. We have among the, come on up, Phoebe. We have in the human race, in our, in our human society, an entity that is above the law, right? It's been given human rights but no human responsibilities, and it has one and only one genetic um, impulse, which is to make money. It has nothing to do with human need, nothing to do with the needs of the planet. That is the corporation. The corporation is the cancer that's killing the human race and killing our planet uh, as we go along. And Phoebe here, who has the most beautiful smile in the world, is going to tell us how we're going to deal with it. 